Sure. Okay, so again, uh, if you have any questions about email marketing or how we can help you out, please go ahead. You may know us from, you took one of our Udemy courses on email marketing, uh, or you uh, found us through the Warrior Forum from one of our past products um, between us. I think we have about 20 something products out that we sell on Warrior Plus, and then now through our own funnels with I Am Rebels. Um, that's Mark in the top screen. Mark is our, our sales copy expert. Uh, if you've bought a product in the last couple of years in the make money online space or internet marketing space from a website like JVZoo or Warrior Plus, uh, chances are that Mark had a hand in creating that sales copy. And now he also does uh, weekly emails, uh, not only for ourselves, but for uh, multiple six figure uh, marketers who outsource uh, the email, right? Their daily emails uh, and voice to Mark. Uh, Brian is by way of U.S. living in Cambodia. Um, Brian focuses on uh, paid advertising, uh, pixel retargeting, um, and offline clients. So he works with uh, a lot of NGOs, national or non-governmental organizations in uh, Cambodia and handles their marketing as well as Fortune 500 companies who don't have a foothold in Southeast Asia but need someone who knows the climate and can market over there. And then I started out uh, four years ago online building solo ad lists, so freebie uh, list building, you know, when you exchange a gift for somebody to opt into your list and then you try to convert them into buyers. Um, back then we used to focus on size and scale when you do uh, freebie list building. So you'd want to get up to you know, 10,000, 20,000 people on your list. And now uh, much more focused on smaller list building, uh, the, the quality over quantity. Did I miss anything, guys? <laughs> no, nope, sounds good. Uh, I think you got it covered. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, some questions got sent in. Uh, remember, we do these every Thursday morning. Uh, we got a few questions sent in, but if you have any questions about email marketing, um, you know, it's such a broad topic that it's hard to really pinpoint in on, on one thing. So if you have something specific, please go ahead and ask. But um, one thing that we focus on with our students um, and Mark, you spent a lot of time on this, but it's you know beginner mistakes. So because you're in, you're involved in email marketing every single day, and you see it from multiple marketers, and then you're also on a lot of lists like we are to learn from other people and see what's going on, what trends are in the marketplace. But common mistakes that people make when they're new to email marketing, or even experienced people, that you see the common mistakes that are costing them money or costing them a relationship with their list. You know, what what do you see, Mark? Uh, there's there's lots going on. I mean, you you nailed a good point right off the bat. It's a good thing. Uh, great free learning is is just to get on a few of these lists, like maybe sign up with an alternative email account, and then you can start seeing what types of things you like about emails, what types of things you don't like about emails. Mm -hmm. um, dealing with dealing with students in the past and people that have taken some of my courses on the topic, one thing I find quite often is is people are they get a new list, they built a list and, and they're shy. They don't want to, they don't want to get in touch with these people. And that's maybe, that's maybe one sort of mistake right off the bat. Like when somebody first signs up to a list, that's when they're, they're most keen to hear from you, you know, and you can make or break a relationship right off the bat by either getting in touch in, in an effective way or, or you know, making them wait. So uh, an initial follow-up email when somebody joins in, I think, is is really huge. Um, and, I mean, I think you, you really have to treat people like human beings. It's easy to hide behind your computer. It's easy to just think, okay, I'm going to just grab this information. I'm going to send it out there, and I'm going to talk to, you know, you know I'm, I'm going to use a swipe, or I'm just going to speak in very generic terms. I think it's really cool for people to get a sense of who you are and, and speak like you're speaking to a friend. It sounds kind of, you know, cheesy, but do it you know talk like Shane if I'm gonna fire you an email we know each other I'm just gonna chat with you and uh, that's I see that lacking a lot in the emails in the space um, especially business to buyer business to customer emails and I think it's great when you can just be yourself yeah you, you, people get overwhelmed beginners they build a list or they sell a product for the first time they get you know they get 300 people on their list and like oh my god I can't send an email to 300 people or you know, in our case, sending out to thousands of people. But if you just think of it as one person, I'm only sending it to one person. Um, you know, the language in that email is directed just at one person. Um, I think that it lowers that barrier of entry to actually writing the email. Um, 
Also, you know, setting up automatic follow-ups. We have about three months now. It just in our, our new, the IM Rebels is fairly new with the funnels we're building out. So just on, the, on that niche site, we have just over three months of emails. And then on our membership site, we're up to six months of emails already built out. So we don't have to go in and, and come up with new content every single day. You know, that when you have an email marketing strategy and we know that when somebody comes on our list, we already sent up three days of indoctrination. So they learn about us. They, they learn about us, they learn about our brand, they get sent to some free training. So everything's all automatic. And that takes a, a lot of stress off too, than having to sit down and, all right, what am I gonna promote? What am I gonna send? Um, and they end up not doing it. So use your autoresponder for that feature. You know, um, We use Infusionsoft, which automates a lot of stuff. So we know if someone clicks on a, a link about traffic, then they get moved to a traffic funnel. If they haven't bought a product, then they get moved to a new list. Um, you don't have to go out and spend you know, the $1,000 setup fee on Infusionsoft and 300 a month. Get response. Um, I'm sorry, Aweber now has campaigns that uh, mimic what Infusionsoft does. So if you have that, take advantage of that. Active campaign is a much cheaper solution too that does um, uh, automation of your list automation. So if someone's new to your list, look at the indoctrination series, they learn about you. If they've already been on your list and join again, they don't get that series. That type of stuff is um, making people money and making life a lot easier. Because when we started automating it, I mean, we came from the world of, you know, you sell a product, you build a list, and then it, you keep sending out emails. But when we got into DI and Rebels, we wanted to automate everything. We wanted to work less. And automating it has made, you know, all the difference in the world. You know, and, and that's a, when we talk to beginners too, we go, what do you have set up? How many emails do you have in your funnel? Nine times out of 10, they go zero, you know? So. Yeah, I think, uh, I think to jump in there, Shane, that um, a lot of people maybe don't realize that automation really is easy. And as soon as you, uh, as soon as you are paying for a service, like an autoresponder service, rely on their support. I mean, for some people on the call, this is all second hat. For some people, they're going to be sitting there going, I don't, I don't even know what, what he's talking about. Well, the good news is we didn't when we started. And you're paying good money for an email uh, responder service, an autoresponder. It's quite easy to just jump on live chat, get on the phone. They'll walk you through the whole process. Sure, they've got training videos and everything everything but it shouldn't be about wasting time it should be just like Shane said get it set up this is the beauty of an autoresponder you can get things automated to make your life easier but then getting back to writing in your own words and writing to one person that solves a whole lot of other problems too you come across like a real person um, I, I think the, the leading into the sort of the next issue I see I see with some email marketers is they don't they don't always um, realize just how valuable a subscriber is and not just in terms of, of money at all but when somebody gives you an email address that's a real sign of trust okay and email marketing is a very it's an in-your-face style of marketing like you're going directly into somebody's inbox okay so you want to speak to them like they're a human being and you want to introduce yourself in the same way okay now by writing in your own words like I said that that wipes out so many issues that a lot of people get nervous about just think about writing to your pal send that email um I think we just got a question in uh, Brian I'm not sure Yep. Uh, Laura's asking, what about cold emails? How do you feel about those? Or is that decided case by case? Um, now, or are you talking about like an affiliate promotion or promoting a product? Um, I mean, we certainly have lists that are doing that in, you know, in multiple niches. So assuming they opted into your list, they know you. Um, but that's why we always like to start off with, if you join our list, you'll get a three day series. Um, telling you about us, you know, warming them up. It builds authority, builds some trust. So on day one, they get a, an introduction. Here's all about us. We link to the blog so they can learn more. Day two, we give them some bonus training. We just link to a YouTube video we made, so we give it away for free. And then on day three is a combination of that too. So we wouldn't, if somebody's brand new. To or our cold, our cold emails, emails that you have that weren't opt-ins. See, that that was a sort of the impression I got from the question. And if that's the case, that's definitely not something we're going to talk about um, 
and any of the anybody that's on our lists, um, they've confirmed that they want to be on our list. They've signed up for a product. They've signed up for a free lead magnet. So what we're talking about here is emailing, like permission-based emailing. Okay. Yeah, it's true. There's list renting and there's list sharing and all that sort of stuff. That's not something we're doing. Um, I'm not going to say it's good or bad, but I, it's certainly not something that I'll do. Um, I don't want to just, hey, how did this person arrive in my inbox? Um, so if, if you mean cold emails in that regard, that's not really something that we're going to be talking about because unless you guys want to jump in, Shane, it's not something we really do. We've never rented lists as far as I know. No, I mean, um, you talk about when they haven't opted in, um, you know, we use, uh, I mean, of course there's affiliates. So uh, affiliates have a relationship with their list and then they email out one of our products. So the, there's a, a trust level there that when they join your list, um, you say somebody told me about it, but when they have it opted in, um, you know, then we do stuff like content marketing where we're adding opt-in forms on our blog. Um, even stuff like blabs here help grow our list, um, selling products and having affiliates drive traffic to it so then they can join our list. But, um, I've tested out in, if, in offline marketing. You might be, are you an offline marketing lore? Cause that's more popular for, um, buying lists. I've done that in the past when we had a, an SMS company, a text message marketing company. Um, we had that for about five years and we tested buying lists from list brokers. Um, because they have the permission to mail, but the, um, the rates, the opt-in rate was extremely low because the, you know, people don't know they're getting hit over the head with a different offer every day from different companies. Um, they're not well qualified uh, leads. So the, the cost wasn't really go. Let me see here. Uh, thanks for clarifying, Laura. If you have people in my contacts and social media, send them an email and we'll join my list. Um, uh, through social media, what if I send them an email, I send them to join my list or offer a free product that required them to opt in. Yeah, I mean, with social media, you of course. People you already are connected yeah. to, uh, how, how would you get their emails? Um, you, you would request it through Facebook or through social media? Yeah, I mean, on social media, Brian is our expert for building our list through Facebook. So we have opt-in forms on Facebook. We run ads on Facebook. Um, to retarget them that way. But as far as someone that if I just had their email contact in, um, in my, you know, email inbox from like, you know, Google circle or something like that, then we would still drive traffic to an opt-in page. We wouldn't add those. Um, if you start adding those people to your autoresponder and then you'll get, um, spam complaints and then you'll get high unsubscribes the first time you mail them then that's going to red flag an AWeb or get response. Um, they can close your account. I mean, we know multiple people that have had their accounts closed down by scraping emails or adding their social media contacts into their email. So, if the that first they used to have software that could they used to have software that could scrape uh, emails off of social media, but that's actually illegal. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah. And I think the only time that you could could ever do this, where you send someone an email asking for their business, is if you're an individual with a specific service for a specific business, and then you write a personalized email to that business offering your service, then something like that is okay. But I think if you're trying to hit people up to buy specific products or something like that, yeah, then yeah, one-on-one you, -on -one you can do it, Laura. Um, of course, I mean, we all get emails like that from SEO companies or offline marketing companies. Um, you can do it on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, basis if you have, I mean, obviously, if you're doing it individually, you can't do hundreds at a time, so you're not going to raise any red flags. You do have to have a, I think, to stay 100% um, can spam compliant, you have to have an address and phone number on there. Um, so if you're doing it on an individual basis, that's fine. I mean, the person probably already knows you. Um, just the conversion rate is very low. You know, it depends, of course, what you're selling, what the price point is, if it's worth your time. But, um, you know, we always give them... I've tried it in the past and it takes a lot of time and unless you're selling something that's going to have a high conversion, it's not really worth it. You have to have a very high, high ticket, con high ticket offer or something that you're going to make a lot off of to make it worth how much time you're going to put into it. Yeah. So you just weigh that out lower, you know, what your time value is and what the conversions are. Uh, let's go into some other stuff here. Um, other uh, mistakes we see being made. Um, 
you know, getting hung up on stats. People always talk about stats, of course. You know, what are your stats? What are your opens? What are your click-through rates? What are your unsubscribes? Um, especially beginners, they waste so much time pouring over each individual line. Um, what, what do you think um, people should be paying attention to their market? Because you deal with a lot of email marketers. Um, I think more so engagement. So like, I'm not as concerned one on an open rate. Um, we were talking about this just before actually that, uh, a lot of people can take action on an email by clicking on a link, going to see your content or even whatever you're suggesting without technically even opening the email. Um, you know, depending on the email client they use. So I want to look at click through rate more than anything, but I also like to, uh, you know, I strongly encourage clients, especially with lists that they maybe have, have let go stale, um, to get some engagement going and to ask some specific questions and ask for some feedback and then, you know, reply to those emails and get those conversations going. Mm -hmm. um, that type of engagement um, increases, you know, your goodwill and definitely uh, your long term um, deliverability rates. Okay, so that type of engagement, I think, is huge. You know, I, like I said, I'm not going to get hung up on open rates. Um, I'm just not. I'm just going to try to to connect with as many people as I can and, and see that I stand out in the inbox or you as an email marketer stands out in the inbox. Yeah. You know, I, the only metric I look at is, you know, am I making sales from my email list? Um, when I email out my list, am I getting a click-throughs and engagement on where I'm sending them? And then when I send out a feedback email, Am I getting replies? You know, is my list alive? You know, exactly. Lori, Lori, you're kind of the opposite of us. You say, you know, you have a massive social media presence and you're way behind an email. We have a massive, massive email presence, and then our strategy is to build out our social media. So, you know, you can you can certainly use use your social media to drive traffic to email opt-ins. Um, you can put opt-in forms right in Facebook or just a simple link to a landing page uh, to give away something and, and grow them from there. But you have an audience already on one platform. So yeah, we could all do better. There's just not enough time in a day. Even with uh, even with three people going, we still run out of time on getting oh, for sure. <laughs> but yeah. Laura, like if you've got that great social marketing um, following or building a great following there, I mean a natural if you don't already have one as a blog. Um, because you've got followers that are obviously interested in what you have to say uh, and your content, and you can direct them to a blog anytime you want, and, and that home page of your blog is going to have an opt-in, you know, to your newsletter or to whatever that's going to get them onto your list, and that's how you start building out from there. That's something that we do a lot. Um, it's tried and proven, you know, and and these are these tend to be very quality subscribers because they're they've already shown an interest in what you've got going on in the first place. Yeah, especially if you have them on multiple platforms, it's always good to capture them. As many places as yeah, you can. And you've already got a head start. If you've got a lot of people on social media, you've got a head start over a lot of people. Yeah, you're not building an audience from scratch. You already have an audience that's probably, if they're sharing your content, liking your content already, um, you know, then email doesn't have to be a strategy for everybody either. You know, because like, Brian, where you, you're in Cambodia, right? You do email only, like the large government organizations want email, but you were telling me earlier that the, the small businesses, Email is basically non-existent in Cambodia with a local market. Yeah, we do uh, SMS. Everyone here has phones and Facebook. So we do all Facebook marketing and SMS marketing. But uh, And, of course, the others like Google Search Network and those. But for email marketing, not really here because people don't have an open email. Yeah. Uh, well, I say that, and I, that's actually incorrect. But... The majority of the people that you'd be targeting uh, don't regularly check emails or open emails. It's not a medium that people are used to. Hmm. It's interesting. So it depends. Um, let me see here. Uh, and you're let's go through some other questions here. So, Mark, you, I mean, uh, you brought this point earlier of the diminishing return value concept of subscribers. I, I think that's important to describe a little bit. Yeah, that's uh, maybe a fancy term, but for basically common sense, we talked earlier about when, when somebody first joins a list, that's when they're most keen to hear from you, right? So one of the sort of uh, mistakes a lot of people make, they're too shy to, to, to talk to their list right away. Um, but also, they maybe don't want to try to promote to their list right away. And uh, I'm not saying your very first email should be a promotional one, but I do think that a powerful effect is to 
send a link to an offer in within the first two to three maximum four emails when you contact a subscriber because you're setting an expectation one way or the other. If all you ever do with a new subscriber is send them three emails of pure content, pure value, they're going, hey, this person's great, and they're never going to think you're not trying to sell them. When you go ahead and actually, and let's not say trying to sell, but how about recommending, you know, yeah. um, suggesting. When you send that link and say, hey, this I just checked this out. I think it's awesome, and it might help your business. Have a look. Then you set an expectation. And people are like, okay, this person, you know, they're not stupid. They're in this to make money too, but maybe what they're suggesting makes sense. What I mean by diminishing returns is I think there's a lifetime value on every subscriber that you have. Over time, let's face it, anybody listening, anybody participating right now, however many lists you're on, you open up early, you open up frequently on a new list. Then over time, you just start deleting those emails or you, or you don't pay attention as much, right? Um, and so we want to jump on and, and um, provide as much value and get engaged with as many subscribers as early on when they sign up to our list as we can. Yeah, and then promoting a product doesn't mean that you're not providing value. I, I've been happy to buy many products online. Um, you know, when you send that, you find a, the perfect product that can help solve those people's niche problems. You know, you're gonna get I get thank yous back. You know, and at the same point, if you send a product that you haven't checked out first, doesn't match your list, you know, you're gonna get unsubscribes, and people are gonna send you back hate mail, which is you, you don't want. So. It's important, that, especially beginners see this a lot. They see, oh, I don't want to sell. But if you're, if you found a product that can help solve their problem, if you found a problem that addresses the reason they joined your list, you know that's helpful to them, and your conversions go up. Your list lasts longer. People want to keep seeing, you know, what you're going to provide, what type of content. So, matching your promotions to the reason they joined the list is a big one. I'm sure we've all joined uh, lists more. We've all joined lists before, and then they start sending stuff that's not even related to the reason that you joined. So those people are just trying to just trying to uh, make money off you and not add any value. Um, See, so Kevin has a question here. The uh, initial contact emails go out to new subs, go out over the autoresponder, or is it personal and manually sent? Uh, Kevin, we um, we have those already automatically loaded, um, so that they go out. And they get a welcome email when they join on day zero. And then with the follow-up sequences, depending on what autoresponder you're using, to um, day one, two, and three, that they get those personalized. And you can personalize it if you ask for the name when they opt in. Um, it depends on our list whether or not we ask uh, for the name on opt-in. Um, asking for the name tends to lower your conversion rate, but then we make more sales on the back end by having that name. So it depends on what type of your market you're in, what the average list life is in that niche. Um, but you can never go wrong by automating it all. And then now that we have our, our framework and our structure built up, then Mark goes in every week and looks at points where, where are we getting big drop off on opens? Where are we getting high on subscribes? You know, where have the sales died out? And then we can keep making adjustments and swapping out emails and changing the copy or you know, scrapping it all together. So let's go through a couple of the questions here. Um, you know, list maintenance is something that you hear a lot about. Um, does it matter? I mean, of course, everybody kind of analysis taught. Um, yeah, in um, our email marketing uh, Udemy course, Kevin, it's uh, spoken about. I and mean, if you don't have that one yet, Oh, that deep analysis? Um, no, we just kind of, uh, you know, as part of our list maintenance, we do that. You know, when we go through, we remove people who haven't clicked and haven't opened a message in 60 days, we remove them. Um, that's just kind of the stuff where we just go through our funnels and look at the open rates and stuff. Um, you know, you'll get all that data if you use no matter what autoresponder you're using. So if we see big drops, um, if we're getting, you know, 20%, 20%, 20%, then all of a sudden our open rates drop to uh, 10%, then we, we go in and try to find out why. Um, I don't believe we've been specifically addressed that in any courses. But, um, yeah, cleaning out your list. So you pay for subscribers that are on your list, and especially AWeber and GetResponse. Every time you bump up a new level on subscriber base, they, they charge you more money. So that's when you want to go in and we clean out. People who have not opened and have not clicked. 
Um, and Mark brought up that point that people can still click your email without opening it in some previewers. And uh, there's two things you can do here. If you have a, a huge list and it's you know five, 600 people, you can move them, take that list and move it to a, a second autoresponder. If you're using Aweber, move it to get response. Um, and then you'll get uh, more opens because of the delivery rates not going through on one autoresponder, it may go through on the other one. So if you have, uh, if you're in a niche with real valuable content and stuff to sell, that's something you can try to try to salvage that list. Um, not a lot of people do that, but it, if you have the time and are willing to test, it's worth it. Um, what else here? Anything else, Mark, you do for list maintenance? Um, going back to the, the comment earlier about, about stats is I just don't worry about it that much. Um, yeah. You know, like we got bigger fish to fry, you know, unless you're getting to the point where you're going to get to say over 10,000 and your costs are really going to escalate, then you might want to go in and clean it up, um, you know, and, and trim it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, if your bounce rates are getting really high, these types of things, those are, those are red flags. Um, that's a little bit technical. It's a little bit advanced, but that's when to, to deal with it. If you have a modest sized list, I, I, my advice is just leave it be. Um, just, just focus on writing good email you know, and, um, and focus on a few things that I, that I get questions on a lot is, you know, how often do we send? Okay. I think that's one, one thing that, that people really struggle with is how often do I email my list? Well, a lot of it depends on the niche you're in. Um, and there's, there's no right or wrong, uh, in some internet marketing circles, it's, it's fairly uh, common to email almost every day five, six days a week. Um, and if say you're an offline business, a consulting company, I always use the example of a gym with a subscriber list. Um, you might be okay to get in touch with them once a week, once every 10 days, as long as they can remember who you are and you've got something valuable to share with them. The, the takeaway for frequency is I like variety, you know, so I'll send out something three times one week and then five times the next week. And then just a couple times the next week. And, and this just really helps, you stand out a little bit more in the inbox. Um, they don't come home after two days of being away, check their email account and see your name in the inbox 12 times in a row, right? That's yeah. just auto delete, <laughs> okay? Yeah, it's important. You don't want those big gaps either. You don't want to go from being off for a month and then emailing once, twice a day. Um, you know, there's people that do email. I mean, we see people that email multiple times a day for stuff, you know, but they're also able to bring you know, replace all the unsubscribes, but uh, that's not really a, a game we want to get into, a hamster wheel game where we're trying to massive unsubscribes at our email and bringing on massive people. Yeah, Kevin, like you mentioned there in, in the chat, you know, having that skill so you can find those drop-offs and those maintenance, you're just increasing the lifetime value of the customer. And then once you can increase that lifetime value, then you can start spending more on paid traffic. So. If you know this X, you know, X amounts that come out the back end and you can increase it. Now you can increase your audiences on Facebook and, you know, and advertising and start spending more per lead. So the more you can spend per lead, you know, you're going to beat your, your competitor. If he doesn't have a funnel that's producing income, we can't put problem and spend money on paid traffic. Um, cool. Uh, let's check out some other ones here. You know, you're only good as your last promo. That's something I know you say all the time, Mark, where if you send a bad, if you send a bad email, you know, you do get a chance to redeem yourself. You're going to lose some subscribers, but I think people's um, subscribers, what, you know, uh, attention span is pretty short and they're, they're, how much they remember is pretty short too. You know, I know we get, even on my private list, there's been times where I make 60 sales one day and then the next day I make, um, two, two sales or zero, you know, but I don't, you can't just stop there, you know, just keep moving forward with your promotions. Uh, let me see here. Here's a good one, Mark. I think that a uh, problem that everybody runs into, um, how to revive a dead email list. Yeah, I get, I get asked this question all kinds of times. Um, yeah. The easiest way is to avoid the problem altogether, okay? Uh, you know, like when you get a new subscriber, have those automated emails ready to go so that they get treated regularly and, and, and properly from you. Fair enough. But let's say you're in that boat, the chain brought up. You have a list. You haven't contacted them in a while. How do we, we re-engage these people? Um, we want to do it with some value and, and some content 
Okay. And we want to give them an incentive to not only open up, but to click something. Okay. So that could be like a free report, a series of free trainings, you know, where we're giving away um, with, with no pitch whatsoever, no, no promo, no anything, just, Hey, you know what? We just shot this. We've, we know we've been quiet, be honest in the email. Hey, no, we've been quiet for a while. Um, we've been, we've been doing a lot of homework and a lot of research and you know what? We're coming out with a whole new whatever series, but I want to give you guys a sneak peek and I've shot a series of training videos that are really going to help you with your, what niche are they in, you know, Facebook marketing, et cetera. And, you know, just re-engage them that way and, and ask questions. And this isn't done very often in email marketing, ask a specific question, you know, say, Hey, um, what aspect of your marketing do you need the most help with? Um, these are the areas I specialize in a, B, C, reply to this email with your choice. And what I'll do is follow up with specific content that helps people out. All right, just show them you care. Show them that uh, they're a person and that you recognize that they're a person with real needs. Um, that's my best advice for re-engaging. Yeah, getting those responses too has a second benefit of helping out your delivery rates in the future because your autoresponder sees that you're getting replies. Um, so a little hack you can do, I mean, we even reply to our own messages because we're on our own lists and we reply to each other on our other lists. Um, that just helps your delivery rates ever so slightly. So we'll, we'll take every few percentage points that we can get. Um, we've been going on a half hour here. Um, we know people have emails to write and lights to run. So if you have any questions, please, uh, please ask them. We'll go through a, a couple more questions that people sent in. You know, the other way to avoid that dead email list is to have a lead funnel set up in the beginning. So you have traffic coming in every day to your, um, to your email list. You know, if you go out and you get a thousand people on your list in one day and don't add another one, you know, of course that email list is going to die out eventually. And uh, no matter of tricks can, can do it, but you'll have people that remain on your list for years, but you know, having a good lead funnel on the front end, of course, is what you want to focus on. Let me see. Open authority from home. We covered a lot here. Okay. Um, next week we have, uh, next Thursday we have Andy Beveridge. He's a, a super affiliate who runs Digital Warrior. And then the week after that, we have Sean Mize. Uh, Sean Mize is the number one person on eZine articles, I think with over 12,000 articles. Um, he's also sold over 100,000 info products. Um, the guy has is going to talk about his productivity, uh, how, how he's able to release almost a new product every day. And then Sean also uses Infusionsoft and is really big into email automation. So he focuses on lead generation that has all the back end of that automated. Sean's going to be on in two weeks. Um, if you have any questions at any time, make sure you find us uh, either on our Twitter. Uh, the best place is on Facebook. Uh, I am Rebels. Brian can put the link up there. Or on our blog, I am Dash Rebels. Uh, you can leave a discussion there anytime. If you're in our uh, Udemy courses, go ahead and leave a discussion there between the three of us. Uh, we all complement each other pretty well, and we're happy to help out. But if there's any more questions, we'll shut it down. We put the link up to our blog. It's a good place for more info. Brian put up the stuff about um, the email marketing on our blog. Facebook is a great place place to find us. You can drop us a message there. Um, if you have any specific questions or want us to look over anything in your email marketing, that's we're happy to do that. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Kevin. Yeah, if you need any help setting that up, just hit us up on our website or on the contact form or on Facebook or Udemy. We're happy to look at stuff. Um, don't mind at all. But uh, that's it. We'll jump on. We'll see you guys next week. Andy Bredbridge, he is a product creator. He has a website, Digital Warrior, and um, we're going to go over how to build a buyer's list and get traffic and convert uh, subscribers into buyers, and then Sean Mize the week after that. So thanks very much. Hope you had fun, and then we will uh, pop up the replays on the blog and on the YouTube channel. All right. See you guys. All right. Thanks for joining us.